Here I am to worship, but I have so many things on my mind. My dog needs to be walked, our kids need guidance, schedules need to be made, the lawn needs to be raked. I need some time to do dreaming and visioning for the future of the church. There's so much to be done, but here I am to worship. Here I am to worship with a full load. The car needs attention, the Zoom meetings need to be scheduled, the budget submitted, the prayers written, important relationships need to be nurtured. I want to be a good steward of all you entrust to me, so there isn't much time to slow down, but I am here to worship. Here I am to worship with the distractions of the day. The paperwork needs to be submitted. The curriculum needs to be written. Does my vote matter? Does my life matter? The laundry's overrun, and there's not enough of me to go around, and I wake up already behind. But I'm here to worship. Here, here we, we are, are to, to worship. worship in spirit and in truth, bringing all of who we are to be transformed by all of who you are, dear God. Sanctify us in your mercy. Wash us in your grace. Make us all together like you. Amen. Light of the world, you step down. to 
Welcome to online worship at our Savior's Lutheran Church. Today is All Saints Sunday, when we remember and give thanks for all of the saints who surround us in faith, particularly our loved ones who have died within this past year. Today, this Sunday, we're also celebrating Confirmation Sunday. We have 30 Confirmation students who will affirm their faith later on today. And uh, because of the need for social distancing, we're actually having three different worship services, and unfortunately, you're not invited to celebrate with our confirmation students because we have to keep so few people uh, in our worship space. But that worship service will be recorded, and within 24 hours of the service, you can tune in and uh, help to cheer on our confirmation students. Each one of them will be wearing a Luther Rose uh, face mask, so we'll take matching pictures, and I invite you to please be praying for our confirmation students in these days, as it's a unique year for them and for all of us, but they're saying yes to their faith. And so you can connect to our confirmation students by praying for them, and we want to connect with you. And so new to our website, there's a Connect With Us logo right on the very top right of the page. And so if you are worshiping with us somewhere around the globe, connect with us. Let us know your name, your email address. If you want to get weekly emails from me to know how you connect, can connect with our church, uh, please uh, fill out the information. We'd love to connect with you. And now it's time to connect to God's Word. Our scripture passage is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 23. Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, the scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, and they lay them on the shoulders of others, but they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. My grandmother, my mom, my aunts, and quite a few of the people in my family and wise people that I've known have always used this familiar phrase, practice what you preach. Before I became a pastor, that made no sense to me. I mean, it made sense, but it made no sense because never would I preach, or so I thought. But there was a phrase, practice what you preach. When we were little, it meant don't tattle on your friends if you're doing the same amount of wrong too or your cousins, or your siblings. When we were a little bit older, it was practice, 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 because we were in the band, or on the squad, or on the team. And in order to be successful, we had to do things repetitiously in order to get them right. So we had to practice all of the time so that our visual, or what we put out, would be the same as what we practiced. And then I got to be an adult. And practice what you preach took on a whole different meaning when I became a parent. Practice what you preach. If you don't want your children to swear, maybe don't swear in front of them. If you don't want them to be enraged drivers, maybe you should tamper down on the road rage. If you want them to practice good eating habits, you have to set an example of good eating habits. If you want them to be joyful, practice joy. A teacher of mine used to have a poem called Children Live What They Learned. And so for me, practice what you preach became an example of living so that someone else would learn from me. Now that I am a preacher, when I look at the scripture text, normally practice what you preach doesn't mean practice my sermon before it comes to you all. Normally, practice what you preach means if the sermon isn't calling me into accountability, isn't holding me into a, in, in accountability, isn't challenging me to be more faithful, to be more honest, to be more loving, to follow God more nearly and more clearly and more dearly, then it's probably one I shouldn't preach. 
And so practice what you preach takes on a whole new meaning when I look at today's scripture. Jesus is talking to a crowd of people and tells them about the scribes and the Pharisees and all of the teachers that call themselves rabbi. Not because they do that. He's not angry with them. He's actually telling the crowd, listen to them because they're actually telling the truth. But here's the problem. Don't be like them because the truth they tell you, they don't live by. And that's a problem. That's a real conflict of interest. It's a real conflict of behavior. It's almost saying, hey, go to bed early, but you stay up till two or three in the morning. Now, granted, we are responsible adults and have things that we have to take care of. But it was Jesus telling the crowds to make sure that you practice what you preach. If you take a good message home from the synagogue or from the church or from worship or from a conference, make sure you live by it. Do what you're asking other people to do. Use your signal if you want other people to be held accountable for not using theirs. But not in a right fighting sort of way. Jesus was really talking to us about making sure that our actions and our words match not so that we could appear good, but so that the gospel, the good news about God that we preach, glorifies God. It's hard to tell people, you better live by the commandments. Don't lie when your nose is growing. It's hard to tell people that they should be honest and kind and respect the Sabbath if they're not doing the same things. Part of our challenge with politicians today, regardless of where you fall, is that we feel like they tell people and give advice to people that they don't follow. See, what we want is consistency, and Jesus is calling everyone into it. He says in the scriptures, you are not to be called a rabbi because you really do have one teacher. But even before that, he says, do whatever they teach you and follow it, but don't do like them because they don't practice what they teach. Jesus holds all of us accountable today for practicing what we preach. Last year, I preached to you guys that I was afraid of death. This year, I preached to you that, yeah, I'm afraid of death, but you know what I'm not afraid of? I'm not afraid of meeting my Savior. I'm not afraid of being reunited with all of the people that I love, who I miss, who have gone to heaven since this time last year. I'm not afraid of living life eternal. And so how do I practice what I preach? I live I trust, I believe in spite of my fear. And so I stand before you as a person who might have been afraid of death and who might still be afraid of death, but one who still chooses in spite of my fear to trust God with my whole entire life and well-being, here now and in the hereafter. And I encourage you to join me on that walk to practice what we preach. I stand here and I preach to you a good message But there are days when I have to sit in the pew and practice a good message. There are days I have to remember that someone is watching what I do, what I say, how I act. And so therefore, I have to live with a certain degree of integrity. This year, we remember the ones we have lost and who've gone to heaven this past year, and we miss them horribly. And the reason why we miss them is because we can all say for sure that one of the things that we love about the people we missed was their consistency. Some of our elders and some of our friends, they practiced something we could appreciate. They practiced love. They practiced friendship. They practiced serving and charity. They practiced simply being present or simply smiling. And it stuck with us and it wrote a note on our heart that stays with us even down through the years. And so we celebrate their transition and their gain into eternal life, but they are calling us into accountability, just like Jesus, to practice the things that we miss about them, to practice the things that we love about God, to be God's hands in the world. We have to practice what we talk about. And so if we talk the good news of Jesus Christ, God's grace, God's mercy, God's everlasting love, then of course we get to be that. 
I'm starting today to tell you that I love you, I miss you, I think the world of you, and in the worst days, I want you to remind me that I have to practice what I just sent to you. So for other people, we ask you to do the same, to practice what you preach, to live a life that challenges you, that glorifies God, to live a life that matches all of the things you say about. One of my favorite scenes is in a television show called Living Single. And there is one of the characters, Regine, who wants to sing the choir solo. Unfortunately, she's not really that much of a singer. Doesn't sound good at all, and she's pretty tone deaf, and everybody knows it but Regine. But Regine's excited about the solo, and as they practice in the choir, the choir is looking kind of forlorn and wondering what in the world is going to be done about the special Sunday when she's due to sing the solo. And Regine sings her heart out, and finally the choir director says, okay, that's it, we're going to be done for today. We'll see everybody next week. And Regine, with her happiness, says, practice, practice, practice. And the organist says, what you preach. It's a reminder. It's an accountability mark. It's a checks and balances that somewhere along the way, our balance of what we say and our balance of what we do have to be pretty equal. And even when they get off kilter sometimes, we hope that they come back into equal balance so that we might not be spoken of as ones who say a lot but do much of nothing. May our lives be so inspired that our words and our actions, our ways of being, give glory to God. Today, we're remembering those who have brought us joy in our lifetime, and it's people that we miss. And because we're separated, it'd be easy to say, well, let's just do the people who went to heaven. But we don't have to do that. So I'm going to invite you all to pull out your flashlights. It could be on a tech gadget. It could be on an uh, actual flashlight or on a tablet. Um, it could be a candle or a battery lit candle. But I'm inviting you today when there are prayers and when you think about the person you miss, to turn on your flashlight. I don't want to flash this right at the camera. But I want you to turn on your flashlights and flash it up and flash it down to remember the people that we love. And may that light remind us to let our light shine. And so since I miss you all, I'm going to flash my light.
Now we take a moment to light a candle or shine a light, calling to mind all those who have lived and died in faith, especially those most dear to us. We hold them in our hearts, even as they are held in God's love. Bind up all who are broken and hearted, and walk gently with those who continue in grief, we pray. Encouraged by the company of all the saints in every time and place, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all saints, we praise you for your word of life, bringing life to the world. Inspire us by the courage and faith of evangelists and martyrs who have gone before, by the witness of missionaries and teachers today, pastors and leaders, our bishops, Elizabeth and Yael, and by the faith shared by our parents and in our families and in our congregation. With your spirit, move us to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of creation, may the leaders of the world and each of us exercise proper care and stewardship of the earth, all its resources, and all its people. Care for areas affected by hurricanes, flooding, and wildfires. Encourage all relief efforts and rebuilding in care for people and creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every nation, be with this country as we share in another national election. Guide all with discernment to understand our common needs and to seek our common good. Keep all polling places and people safe and healthy. Bring unity that we may look to a future with hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all faith, Encourage the faith of all children and young people, especially those youth who affirm the baptismal faith this Sunday in the rite of confirmation. May they continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of every blessing, we pray that the poor may be blessed in the kingdom of God, the hungry filled and the sick healed. We pray for all those who are ill or in need, for those who have asked our prayers. We name them before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen.
Saints come 